Could we see a massive blockbuster trade this summer with the New York Rangers pursuing Jack Eichel? We'll discuss the possibilities and what it could look like coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, today we're talking about potential off-season blockbuster trade from the New York Rangers pursuing Buffalo Sabres center iceman Jack Eichel. Now, it's a topic we've discovered before, but... Obviously, the last uh, few days' events here uh, with the Rangers organization, I think it's kind of led us to talk about this again. It's gotten a little bit more attention in the media. Uh, we've seen some uh, renewed reports here that the Rangers are now, with all the changes they've made, heavily expected to make some changes to really push this rebuild forward during the offseason. Of course, we saw uh, a lot of things transpire. In case you've been living under a rock and have totally missed all all the stuff going on here. Basically, we had a big situation with Tom Wilson of the Capitals uh, basically ragdolling uh, Artemi Panarin, uh, taking liberties on Pavel Buchnevich. He only got a fine. It led to a big line brawl the next game. Uh, and obviously, right after that, we saw President of Hockey Operations, John Davidson and GM Jeff Gordon, be fired and relieved from their duties uh, after the Rangers put out a statement calling for NHL player safety head George Peros to be removed from his post uh, that they felt he was incompetent. But of course, that came from directly from Rangers ownership. We know that now. And the uh, president and GM didn't quite agree with how the owner was doing things. And uh, the rest is history. Now, of course, there's many reports out there saying that the owner was likely going to move on from them anyways because he felt this rebuild wasn't happening fast enough but it was also a wake-up call with these events saying that this team needed a little bit more grit and toughness to be able to defend itself and stick up for its teammates so we now have chris jury at the helm as president and general manager uh, we're not sure about the future of David Quinn. We probably won't know that until after the season is over. Uh, I do think it's possible Quinn sticks around. Uh, it was rumored he was given a five-year contract when he was hired. We, he would only be three years into that. Uh, so there's still be a couple of years on that deal. I do think it's possible that Drury will continue to uh, give Quinn a little bit of rope here and let him carry on. But that's not a given either. So there could be changes behind the bench. We'll have to wait to be seen on that. But we know that Chris Jury, I think, at least in my opinion, would shape this team a little bit different than the way Davidson and Gordon had been the past few years. But I do think they've done a lot of good things and set this team up in a lot of uh, really good prospects and a good future here that they, they were certainly trending in the right direction. But as we know, owner James Dolan is very impatient and impulsive and three years into a rebuild, things were just not moving fast enough. We've seen him make a very impulsive moves on the other side of the operations in basketball, the New York Knicks, and the same thing that was done here with the Rangers organization. So could they renew their pursuit of Sabres center iceman Jack Eichel? It's certainly been a hot topic uh, before, and it's been brought up again here now, as I mentioned. Now, if you take a look here at what's gone on, this team needs toughness. Well, Jack Eichel's not going to answer that question. So I do expect other moves to be made in order to make this team a little bit tougher to play against and have a little bit more toughness. I mean, you can't just have goons anymore in today's league. You need to have guys that are skilled. Unfortunately, Tom Wilson, like for their opponents playing against the Capitals, Wilson's a skilled guy who can score 20 goals, intimidate everybody because nobody's big and strong enough to take him on and do what he wants out there, which is not really, really right per se, but that's how it goes. So I think the Rangers will certainly be looking to add some muscle into their lineup with skill connected to it, of course. Uh, and at the same time, they need some more skill to continue pushing this forward to be more successful. And Jack Heichel could be a big part of that. Now, this past offseason, with the old regime at the helm, they had trade talks regarding Jack Heichel. They made offers to the Sabres. They were trying to get this deal done. And at the end of the day, it wasn't even so much that the offer wasn't good enough to the Sabres. The Sabres basically decided they were not ready to make the trade and that they wanted to continue to have Jack Eichel in their organization for at least a little bit longer before they made this deal. So uh, looking back now, you would think that with the ownership pushing the way they are, a new GM at the helm, uh, many think that they're going to expect Drury to make a big splash in the offseason. Why not renew their efforts here to go after Eichel yet again? Now, the rumored package uh, would be including some key players, but if you look at this roster and how it's assembled and the prospect pool, they, they really could afford to give up a decent amount here and still have lots in the cupboard. For example, the main piece in the forward group going back the other way was rumored to be Capo Caco. 
Uh, obviously, the number two overall pick from Finland, uh, slowly coming into his own here, certainly making good progress every year. He's a big guy, has you know a lot of potential to be a really good power forward for a long time. Uh, you've also got uh, expected to be in the deal would be defenseman K. Andre Miller, who's a really young up and coming defenseman. Uh, there's also talk about uh, another younger prospect defenseman, whether it be like a Matthew Robertson or possibly even a Zach Jones. Like one of those two guys would be made available too. And then, of course, you also have probably a first round pick in there included. And you could also have something else off the roster. I uh, wouldn't be completely shocked if they considered now, it may not be the package the way it is exactly, but. Uh, you, between Strom and Zabanajad, I would think they would probably want to move one of them to bring in Eichel, uh, given what they're all going to be looking to get paid here, because Strom and Zabanajad uh, aren't signed for very long, so the Rangers are going to have to decide on their future as well, and the Sabres are going to probably want something coming back who can play center, and Capo is more of a winger, so that they may prefer to have a slightly different package there too. I don't know, but th those are the main key younger pieces that the Rangers were rumored to be willing to move, uh, and had kind of had discussed in a deal with the Sabres before. Now, it was also uh, rumored here, and I think that the sources are pretty good. Uh, part of it came from Rick Carpinello in The Athletic today, uh, and it was talking about the fact that the Rangers were apparently really close to making a significant hockey trade at the NHL trade deadline, but the other team bailed and got cold feet at the last minute and backed out of the deal. Now, of course, we don't know the full details but it's not a situation where they were going to be getting a rental player that didn't really make sense now closer to the deadline the rangers were a little bit more into conversation trying to push for a playoff spot and i could see some you know maybe need there for a little bit of aggression to get into the playoffs i i can get that but this wasn't the case this was a case of them really having a solid opportunity to pick up a player that they felt could be a good part of their uh, foreseeable future Who is that player now there's other sources saying the team was believed to be in the north division so if you take a look at the north division you can pretty much guarantee that any significant pieces would not be moved from teams like the leafs or the oilers uh likely the jets and the habs the four playoff teams i can't imagine they would be moving a significant trade out now of course it depends on what's going back maybe it would have been maybe montreal because there was some talks between the rangers and habs around tony d'angelo um but that obviously didn't work out either but the whole thing with d'angelo and the hams was more about him being uh, put through waivers and bought out and then re-signed by montreal and then maybe another trade being taken care of for montreal to send something to the rangers but that likely wouldn't have been it either so you're looking at the teams that are out of the playoffs so most likely vancouver calgary ottawa if you look at Ottawa, like I don't really see them doing anything too substantial. Majority of their core pieces are really young guys. Um, I mean, you never know, but it seems unlikely. Uh, the Vancouver Canucks, may, maybe, I guess, but to me, the more likely team would be the Calgary Flames. If you look at the Flames, uh, another team that has some well-established players and a team that's struggling, uh, missing the playoffs, or likely at that point, uh, and have been rumored to make some pretty good changes too, Guys like Sean Monaghan, Johnny Gaudreau, um, you know, players like that could have been what... I and mean, that's just a guess on my part. Um, because based on the sources, they say the team was in the north. Um, and if it was, that that would be my best guess. But we don't really know. But either way, they were looking to make a significant hockey trade at the deadline. So this is the old regime uh, that was still in charge here. And now with all the changes we've seen made and ownership really putting the pressure to want to accelerate this rebuild... You have to think that they're going to have to take it a step further and continue to push for those types of deals in the offseason. So, like I said, they have have a history of been pursuing a guy like Eichel, so it only makes sense that they would continue to do that. Like I said, there could be other trades happening as well. Like I said, they definitely want to get tougher, and adding Jack Eichel is not going to do that, but it will make them more skilled it'll get them a top center iceman who can produce with them for a long time to come under contract it's a big contract but you know what the other thing too the rangers are going to have an advantage next year over a lot of teams because they're going to have a lot of money coming off the books because uh, they have a lot of dead cap space right now in buyout money that's tied up in some different contracts between guys like Longfist and shattenkirk and ones that they have on the books there but a lot of that's coming off they're, they're getting i think it's like seven or eight million dollars 
back in dead cap space next year that will be freed up. And then, of course, they have a few other deals that uh, could be adjusted as well for other contracts expiring. So, like, the Rangers are going to be one of the teams that actually have some flexibility. And like I said, they also have guys like Zibanejad and Strom, who are their top two centers right now, that are not tied up long term and are going to be needing new deals. So it would be a good transition period if they are going to make a move to consider moving one of their centers and bringing in Eichel. Like, they don't even need to clear out a ton of cap space to make it happen. So they have more flexibility that way, and it can be more of a futures based package going to the Sabres if that's indeed what it's going to take uh, or maybe they have one solid roster player like you know like a Kako for example which is not a big contract right now because he's still in his ELC and then the rest are also ELC or you know not even kicked in yet because they're still uh, you know prospects so uh, you throw in the three players we talked about like Miller and Kako uh, one of their young defensemen like a Robertson or a Jones a first round pick we said it was going to take four or five solid pieces to get Eichel well we're pretty much there uh, maybe throw in another player off the roster and you've got yourself a pretty interesting package for the Sabres to really mull over really closely there and think real long and hard about making that trade now if you're the Rangers and you're Rangers fan don't worry about the prospect defenseman going out like you've already got like Adam Fox is becoming one of the best defensemen in the NHL you get Jacob Trouba under contract for uh, quite a while yeah you get Ryan Lindgren who's becoming a pretty solid defenseman as well and besides the ones we're talking about maybe having included in a trade, you still got Braden Schneider coming on the way, who was their first-round pick last year. You still got Nils Lundqvist coming over from Sweden. Uh, and they wouldn't move all of them. Between Miller, Jones, and Robertson, you're not going to probably move all of them. You're probably looking at one or two being included in a trade. So at the end of the day here, you have the D prospects to include one or two to make it real interesting. A solid young forward, maybe a more established forward and a first-round pick. I mean... That's a pretty sweet deal if you ask me. So I do expect the Rangers now, after everything that's transpired in the past few days, I already kind of suspected it, but it just really elevated that much higher now that I will be shocked if they don't do something substantial and make a huge blockbuster trade this offseason. And to me, their primary target will be Eichel the Sabres. So let me know what you think of this potential package to get Eichel. Do you see this being a reasonable trade that could happen? If not, give me your mock trades on what you think is reasonable down in the comments and we can discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news from around the entire NHL. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.